Hey everyone, my name is Keshav and I'm the producer for this episode. Today's conversation is with Charles Ackerman, who is the CFO of Nextleaf Solutions, an entrepreneur and St. Mary's University graduate. He joined Sam to discuss his time as a student at SMU and the importance of aligning yourself with people that have similar values to you. Charles also shared the journey of his career that it has taken him on so far uh, from working all across Canada to Australia even, and ultimately becoming a CFO at the young age of 26. I've linked uh, the company Charles is the CFO of down below uh, in the description and also Charles's LinkedIn. So feel free to, to reach out to him and connect with him if you'd like and, uh, and check out his story. Thanks and enjoy this episode. Charles, we start this podcast off with a super secret, super non-secret, no, super secret question. It should, I don't know, loosen things up and scare you just a little bit. Are you scared? <laughs> I'd say I'm ready. I'm okay. Ready. <laughs> Pancakes or waffles? Oh, that's a good one. I'd go pancakes. I'd go pancakes. Yeah. Cool. I, uh. I'm not a big waffle guy, uh, not a huge pancake guy either, but uh, I, I like, uh, I guess to be specific, I like blueberry pancakes. That oh, would be my choice. Absolutely. <laughs> Have you ever been so ha like hangry that you just roll up the pancakes and stab the stirp and just like just shove them in like little roll ups? I have generally when I'm eating them on the road. That's yeah. Kind of my, uh, that, that's a go-to uh, a breakfast on the fly, so to speak. Yeah, they are definitely like little little hand hot cakes. Cool. Absolutely. All right. Um, I mean, I was just asking for a friend because, of course, I've never done that. <laughs> Charles, I have had on my podcast. I've had on former students, um, uh, recent alumni. I've had on friends, colleagues. I've had on mentors. Uh, basically, I've been uh, people that I barely know, um, but who are tied to the profession and tied to the, the candidates or, you know, aspiring candidates or DAL alum. So how about you start us off by sharing how do we know each other and how Absolutely. long have we known each other for? I was actually thinking about this the other day. I want, it's been years. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say it's been three-ish, maybe four years. And, and I don't remember the exact time, but I remember when we first met, it was, uh, it was a Starbucks I'm gonna say in, in Bedford. Ooh, um, yeah. And we, we, we bumped into one another. I was uh, I was having coffee with a, a friend and, and business colleague of mine, and and we kind of just uh, I would say it was happenstance. You you had uh, I think uh, kind of heard some of what we were chatting about, and, and clearly business, and and um, you were kind enough to come up and introduce yourself and and kind of give a bit of background. And I think you you had recently moved to the area, actually. You and, were good. Uh, you were, I didn't even tell you there was going to be a test and you are already like A plus material. Yeah. Um, so I'd recently moved. It was probably around this time, exactly three years ago. I was planning doing my syllabus uh, and it was the first time I was going to teach intermediate financial accounting too. So first time teaching the fourth years because I had just arrived in Dal um, in 2018 and taught one section. And I was like, man, I, what was I at the time, like 31 or something. And I got into teaching at 27, 26. And I was like, I am starting to get to the age where I can no longer like relate one-on-one, -on -one. <laughs> you know, maybe I'm like, um, you know, and so I was like thinking and I'm doing it my syllabus and I'm like, man, it'd be really great if I could have some people in my classroom to talk about technical accounting in a relatable sort of way. And then, yeah, you happen to be sitting behind me with your friend. And of course I eavesdrop because that's why you go to coffee shops. You eavesdrop, you listen to the bad dates. Sometimes you put in your music so you can zone out and actually get work done. And it, on, like in between my music sessions, I heard you talking about your uh, CFO consulting. And then, yeah, when I got up to leave, I was like, holy crap, like he's young and he, like, <laughs> he looks fun. And so, you know, I don't really know anybody in the area. I've had like a few, a few professional friends. And I was like, hey, if there's ever any chance where we can, you know, chat and maybe you'd be interested in coming to meet my students. And of course, then, um, you know, you were like, yeah, like, let's talk about it. Let's keep in touch. We had a couple of like, chats. We got to know each other. Um, I Googled the heck out of you. You Googled the <laughs> heck out of me. And we were like, OK, yeah, this is <laughs> this is more legit. And yeah, you came and you were my second. So you're one of the OG guest speakers in person, live guest speakers. And we've kind of kept in touch ever since. So yeah, that good memory. And I mean, cause you've had a lot going on since 
fall of, of 20, 2018. And so I look forward to hearing about what you've done since then, as well as kind of what you were doing leading up until that point. So um, during my Google uh, search on <laughs> you, uh, one of the things that stuck out when I heard you saying to your friend was that you provided CFO services. And so, you know, as a background, you are a CPA. And I kind of want to know where are you from? How did you get your CPA? And maybe let's hear the story about how that came to be. Fair? Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, well, and, and I'll preface it by saying I, I, uh, I didn't have, um, I didn't have plans necessarily to be, uh, to be a CPA. I, I kind of um, happily fell into things and, and mm -hmm. had some good people that influenced me. But to kind of start the story, um, grew up just outside of Halifax in, in beautiful Fall River and, and uh, was fortunate enough to go to school at St. Mary's. Uh, you know, don't hold that against me. There's going to be a lot of Dow folks. Uh, I take a lot of ribbing for that uh, from, from Dow folks, but uh, no, I, uh, I, I went Halifax. to- We're all Halifax. We're all Halifax, right? And, and that's it. Um, so yeah, so I went to St. Mary's, did accounting and, and um, you know, I'd always had a, a, an interest in business in general, but but really didn't have have uh, grand designs as to what I was going to do. And, and through university, I had had some exposure to small business, had a landscaping company and a lot of kind of the traditional um, entrepreneurial uh, early ventures um, had done some real estate stuff in university. And it was really through those things, uh, as well as some some really uh, early and, and important business mentors I had. Uh, folks that I had met uh, actually at my first job, which was a golf course, uh, usually a half decent place to meet people. And and the funny thing is, I, I'm not a golfer. I, I wasn't a golfer then, and I'm really not now. But uh, so was it got... strategic then? Like what was, <laughs> you know, what was gonna... it, it? It wasn't. It was it was it was convenient. I could work at the golf course early, and then I thought I'd spend uh, my afternoons at the beach. But uh, I always found uh, other things to fill my time. But no, I I you know. What I did learn from that was really the importance of relationships and, and you can build relationships with people and, you know, all over the place. And, and so um, the golf course seems to be a reasonable concentration of experienced uh, people. And it was really, I, I, you know, when I was trying to figure out what to, uh, what to do at university, and, and I think I was coming through my second year, um, you know, had, had connected with some of the alumni and, and some folks that, uh, I thought had been really successful, you know, a lot of them entrepreneurs and business folks. And, uh, you know, a couple of them in particular were, were CPAs and, and had since gone on to do other things in, in business, a myriad of different things, own businesses and, and whatnot. And, and I think that's really what piqued my interest was the CPA wasn't just the, the stereotypical uh, kind of image that I had in my head of, of someone sitting there, you know, with the, the green brim visor and, and ledgers and things. And, and I always, you know, that that was my uh, opinion of it, like, like I think a lot of folks. But in talking to some of those people and, and um, again, fortunate through that uh, kind of same network of people ended up getting a, an, a summer internship at a, at a local firm. Um, a small firm in Dartmouth, AC Hunter Tellier, and, and it was great. I <laughs> They gave me an internship. It was two months, uh, and it was right after tax season, and they said, look, this this work is going to be terrible. You're basically just going to be filing things and, and reviewing your turns and stuff, but you know, you'll know, you get to see at least a little bit and, and hang out with some good people, and, and that was really, I mean, that was important for me um, to see if it was something I was interested in um, and just to kind of get exposure for me, um, and like some people, I, I definitely have learned by by doing, um, and I and I certainly wasn't hugely academic in university. It, it was really in going through university and doing the CPA program that I I developed a significant appreciation for what academics can do, supplement it with with real world experience. So, kind of a perfect program for me in in hindsight. Um, and when I look backwards now and and you know, some of the professors that I had, they, you know, they say, well, I always knew you were going to do this. And, and uh, I say, well, you knew a lot more than me. Uh, you know, what am I going to do next kind of thing? But no. They, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Since you've been right so far. Hey, so, I just want to dig in a little bit to that because um, one of the things that came up from the feedback from your talk was 
in, you came, you were an invited guest, you were the first invited guest to IFA 2, Intermediate Financial Accounting 2. And because you didn't mind then, I'm going to assume you don't mind now. Uh, were you like an A or an A plus student in Intermediate <laughs> Financial Accounting 2? I forget. It was, there was an yeah. A in front of it, right? Oh, uh, yeah, no. The only A uh, associated with me is, is, is the first letter in my last name, but uh, <laughs> No, I, so, so in university, I mean, I, I was, I would say a solid uh, C student. Um, and, and I remember, I mean, my mark in intermediate was uh, C minus and, and it was, it was a mercy C minus uh, from <laughs> Professor Young, uh, who is a, still a very dear friend of mine. And, and I remember, uh, you know, she, she knew I wanted to do my CPA and, and, uh, at the time, the, the prerequisite bar I suspect it probably still is was a C minus, and and so uh, I think she gave me a bit of a mercy mark there. But but it was for for me, and 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 I wasn't um, I was never uh, driven to be an, an A student. I, I I I didn't feel like I needed to be. And in hindsight, um, you know, a bit better uh, uh, academic effort and marks would have helped in some of the recruiting. I mean, the reality is accounting, particularly at the firms. There's, you know, there's so many great candidates and, and it's a competitive process. So, so marks are just something, you know, it's, it's not the only thing by any means. And I think less, less and less. So maybe they, you know, there's more sophisticated kind of recruiting and analysis of what makes a great candidate. Um, but, but in hindsight, you know, studying a bit more would have resulted probably in less studying in my CPA. So, but I, I was, a, I was a C student, um, it was really as I was starting to get into my fourth year, I knew I was going to do my CPA. I started appreciating it and, and taking it a lot more seriously because I knew I was going to have some, some pretty rigorous studying ahead. And, and to that point, when I got in my CPA, um, I'd been fortunate. I, I, I'd gotten to do the internship. Sorry, Charles, I am just going to dig in there just for two seconds <laughs> because sure. so many of our students, like there are layers here. Normally every year, students are worried about fourth year accounting, which starts off with intermediate financial accounting two, uh, yeah. audit and tax one, and it's heavy. And then yeah. the winter is no joke as well. And the reason I bring this up is because in addition to it being a regular, typical, difficult fourth year, we're also coming off of COVID where this is going to be the first time students have been in person since perhaps like a year and a half, maybe even two years, like depending on um, exchanges and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of anxiety. And I guess what I, I really want to get through with your story is it's good to have goals and it's good to have objectives and whatever those mean to you, it's good. It's never the end of your story. You know, yeah. C minuses aren't your destiny. Um, there's no, well, if I do bad now, uh, there's no way I can make it later. Or, and if like, and I even say do bad, like if that's what doing bad is your definition, because I, that semester, I had the most upset, salty A student ever. Like they were upset. <laughs> yeah. I only ever get A pluses. And I was like, yeah. well, <laughs> like, not here. <laughs> and yeah. then I conversely had a flying squirrel hug. Like, have you ever seen those flying squirrels? I had a flying yeah. squirrel hug C plus because this can, this student, um, you know, got a 33 on the first test, came in debriefed, continued to work really hard, passed the second test, and then got enough points to um, pass and ended up with like a C or a C minus, um, you know, very similar story. And she was so proud and she would share, you know, what she was doing, her study techniques and to utilize resources. And it was so rewarding seeing her meet her definition of success. And, you know, she went on and she continued to graduate. She, you know, she had no problems with the winter semester. She just kind of got her groove, right? We yeah. all get our groove at different times and it's never, you know, she's working in accounting. She's, she has a good career. So, Anyways, I just really want to emphasize that and just kind of, I, <laughs> I hope there's no like PTSD a few years later. <laughs> no, I just it's, love this part. it's an interesting point too. And, and I think um, I'll, I'll kind of segue into how the CPA program went for me, but, but I always found this. So I, I was not, um, I didn't strive for perfection in marks. Like an, an A wasn't perfect to me. And, and, and perfection is, is such a relative thing for people. For me, I, I knew I wanted to get my degree. I wanted to get my prereqs that would, would let me go into my CPA program. And, and so I, I was more concerned about what I was getting out of it versus that mark. And, you know, it, it made 
it made university less stressful for me, for sure. Um, you know, and the recruiting pro process for the CV, it, it's all stressful. Like it, it, it is just, um, it's kind of the nature of it a little bit. But I think, you know, I looked at a lot of my friends and, and you know, I was surrounded by a lot of really smart people in university and then, and then even more smart people in the CPA program. Um, and I look at folks that were traditionally straight A students and, and some of them had a really hard time when you're studying. The, the program isn't designed that way. And, and, you know, I think more and more so um, undergrad curriculum and structure is moving toward the case base, which is so much more relative. It's not, you know, did you get 10 out of 10? It's answers and, and, and right answers are much more subjective, um, which is challenging for some folks because there's more ambiguity. For, for me and my kind of style, because I wasn't concerned with, you know, did I get 100%? I was more concerned, you know, have I gotten most of it right? Um, that, that actually, it's, it's interesting. It made it a bit easier, but, you know, trying to remain relaxed and figure out what's the ultimate goal. You know, when you're going through university, that test is the most important thing in your life. But, you know, years after university, you won't remember that. You'll remember kind of the people that you're with and, and generally kind of, the, you know, the degree you got. Same thing with the CPA program. So I think that's always an important thing to kind of keep in mind is, you know, try to put it in perspective. Do, do a great job. You don't have to do a perfect job, you know, and, and remember why you're doing it. Um, and, and to that the end, parties. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, work hard. So, have fun. Totally. <laughs> well, and, and it's, it's honestly the people you meet um, through, through university, through the program. I mean, for me, I, I ended up, you know, my, my studying partner that I studied for my, my uh, then Yuffie with, I'm still a good friend of mine uh, to this Same. day. And, and, you know, the, it was the people that I met um, through that, that you end up, you support one another and, and, you know, you, re, you learn a lot about yourself, obviously. So that's super valuable in university, very valuable and a, and a great um, part of the CPA program, you know, above and beyond the designation and the technical learning you have. Um, and, and that being said, for me, you know, I was a solid C student in university um, in, in the program, I, I ended up making the honor roll and, and, you know, what? I say, I say, I say that because <laughs> if I can do it tr truly anyone can, but, but Wait, that's the top 10 or 15% it's, of all yeah. writers across Canada. Yeah. Top, top 10%. And, and so right. it, which is, you know, I, 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 I thought it was great. It was, it was, you know, I got an extra little certificate, which was nice. I was, I was happy just to have my CPA, but you no, know, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's a good example of, I, I studied really hard in, in the program and I definitely focused. It was the first time I really kind of focused. I had a lot more um, reason to, to mm -hmm. focus. I, I, I knew why I wanted to do it and I really wanted to get the most out of the program. Um, and I figured, you know, it was kind of a year and a half, two years of your life where you really dig in and, and at the end of it, you've got something that will last you a lifetime. Um, and so I, I also found it a bit easier for me, again, my style of learning. I, I liked that um, I could relate to things I was doing generally day to day with work. And um, it, it started to kind of tie out the academic to the practical, um, which I found really valuable. So it's, you know, you, you don't have to be a, 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 an A plus student to do your CPA and you don't have to be an A plus student in your undergrad to do really well in the program it can make things easier. And, and if I did it again, I might, I might apply, you know, a more balanced effort across the board, but um, you know, it's all relative to, to effort and, and knowing why, right. And having yeah, a and I think, I think um, like a traditional university where, you know, you have these passive lectures and you have your scribbling notes and maybe there's some homework and then you take the tests and then you never look at the test again. And then you go around the next topic uh, until maybe it's on the midterm or the final exam. So one of the things that our courses do is we actually um, map onto the CPA program in the mm. sense that um, we're all about the applied and it's good to have some, you know, technical knowledge, of course, and that is good for pre-work, just like yeah. you would prep for a meeting or prep for a CPA workshop, you prep for a class uh, and you get, you know, because we incentivize um, students in a number of ways, just like the CPA program does, we provide some incentives for that pre-work. And then the classes are participatory. So active learning style, you know, get in, apply, use it. 
simulations, yes, yes. some cases, uh, perhaps creating some artifacts. Then demonstrate your knowledge on the tests, some MCQ, because that's what you see in CPA when they're not virtual, and some case based. And you know, they've really meant to map on. Um, we are rigorous like the CPA program, but we still are at the undergraduate level. So it's not like we're, <laughs> you know, yeah. continuing to step up. But what we do is we don't teach you stuff that they won't cover there because 90% of our DAL grads go on to the, the CPA. Uh, in some in some way, shape, or form. So we really want students to be prepared for that and not just like, relearn things in a different way later. So work smarter, not harder. And yeah. that's something that I, I take pride in. So I, I love that, you know, that really kind of latches onto what you're saying is like, wait a minute, if it was maybe presented in different or something where I could see the use, right? Yeah. Maybe if I could see the line. So if somebody's looking forward to doing graduate level accounting, CPA program, or just really just having general business sense, even if this is your, your last line of kind of business education, it's meant to be applied. So if you can't use it, I'm not quite sure what we're doing, <laughs> right? Yeah, no, it's, it's totally true. And, and it's, um, I, as my career has gone on, I mean, obviously, a lot of it's been very finance and accounting focused. But it's interesting, the other aspects, I, I've been fortunate to get exposed to um, all facets of business uh, operation and and a solid understanding of accounting, whether whether you're in marketing, sales, operations, management, like you know, you distill it down and and um, understanding whether even if it's a not for profit business, it doesn't just have to be for profit. Having a solid understanding of of the debits and credits, uh, so to speak, um, will serve people really really well, and and it just helps inform. Um, people's decision making, um, regardless of what of what facet you're in. And I mean, here's a, a great example. Our, yeah. our premier elect is uh, is a CPA, and and you know you you find as, as I go through my career, um, more and more I see CPAs um, doing a bunch of different things, and and people with strong accounting backgrounds. You know, you you certainly can leverage that into into leadership positions. Oh, completely. And anytime I remember having. So my, my CFO experience, if there was a number, it came to me, right? I was the first line of numbers in our relatively small office. And I really kind of hammered home later because I'm like, wait a minute, my value is bringing depth and understanding to numbers and being able to communicate these. Whereas sometimes people um, who don't have our training sometimes see numbers and they're, it's almost like they're allergic. They're like, Oh no, uh, <laughs> but, yeah. but also sometimes we're like, Oh, accounting. So you're really good at math or like, all, you know, and I'm like, Oh no, yeah. I don't math very much. Like maybe back in the day, but if I don't have my Excel like spreadsheet and I don't have my little sum, <laughs> you know, yeah. or it's been a beverage or two, like they're good luck getting me to multiply something. So you know, it really is um, that kind of communication, that financial, <sighs> translation that you know what's your language like oh English and accounting like I'll communicate and you know dig in and have the confidence to speak to the numbers and find that out you actually had a really good saying and I don't want to misquote you so if any of this sounds familiar <laughs> stop me and and correct me but you said something like business is something yeah. and, do you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah, I yeah it's funny I was talking to someone about this the other day <laughs> I like, I like, I like dropping little lines like this, but no, it was, it was, and, and, and it was a, a, a CPA uh, who had gone on to have a really cool career. Um, uh, he had become, I want to say he might've done a CPA with Deloitte, um, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, and, and quickly went on to uh, industry, was working for a fiberglass company, a manufacturer and, and became the controller and, and became the uh, CFO and and ultimately the general manager and and went on to buy this business and then subsequently sell it years down the road and and so a really neat career and and um, had done you know really really wonderful things built the business and, and helped grow it um, he he said to me um, and I have to give him credit for it uh, if if business was a sport accounting would be the score and and you know I thought that was a really eloquent simple way and and I I still say it to this day. Uh, both both to young you know aspiring accountants but also existing accountants and, and most you know it resonates people like that it's uh, it's a great way to put accounting and, and it's so true I mean it's broader than just um, just your natural vertical it's, you know it's not just arithmetic it's 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 
all the facets of business that you distill it down and, and operation. So I, uh, to this day, that resonates with me. That's a good one. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you went into your fourth year, you had a couple of month uh, internship in more of a tax-based role, got yeah. to see what a firm was all about. And how did the fourth year recruiting cycle go and where did it lead you? What did you do after graduation? Yeah. Yeah. So as you mentioned, I, I, I was just, I'd articled or, or interned rather with a, with a small firm and, and ended up doing my, my CPA there. Um, okay. So it was, it was it, with that firm. Yeah, it was oh, with that firm. Nice. And, and it was, it was actually a great, um, I kind of went through the typical recruiting and, 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 you know, at the time, I think the, the big firms in Halifax, the EYs and KPMGs of the world were, were hiring like two or two to four candidates. Like, and I think, I think that's grown a lot since, which has been great. Halifax has grown a ton in the last 10 years, but it was super competitive still is obviously. Um, so I, you know, I, 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 I was excited. I, I liked being at a small firm from the stance for me. And, and I ended up getting some big firm experience. So I'll, I'll, I'll comment on both, but small firm for me was really cool because um, you know, I was working directly with the entrepreneurs and business owners and, and they were small to medium sized businesses. So it was, I, I appreciated that because I, I'd had a little bit of entrepreneurial exposure, um, which I really enjoyed and, and was probably uh, a foreshadow of what was to come in my career. Um, so enjoyed my time at the small firm, um, got exposed to entrepreneurs that I'm, I'm still friends and, and do business with actually to this day. So it's kind of come full circle. Um, at the same time too, I, I, I guess I was there about uh, a year and a half after I graduated. So I, I'd finished my CPA and gotten my letters and uh, decided that I wanted to, I wanted to try something a little different. I, I wanted to you see what a bigger firm was like and, and um, you know, started looking around at, at some different opportunities at the same time became more and more interested in, in M&A and, and mm -hmm. transactions. So, you know, advising on, on entrepreneurs buying and selling businesses and whatnot. Um, and it so happened that, that I had an opportunity in Halifax with, with Grant Thornton to join uh, their corporate finance team, which, which was a great opportunity for me, bigger yeah. firm, bigger office and, and working on um, stuff that I wanted to focus on a little bit. So yeah, probably bigger like deals, um, deal side yeah. that maybe wasn't available at the smaller firm. And again, totally. like now you have a national, um, national finance, so probably can have exposure to bigger markets. Neat. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt, it was, it was good. I went from an office of ten people to one hundred and fifty, so it was, it was definitely kind of those different worlds. And yeah. and I think there's, the, you know, the the commonality with with working at a firm and and whether it's big or small is almost everyone you're surrounded with is really smart and, and you've all gone through kind of a similar path. And so I find there's, um, there's a lot of commonalities that, that you find with, with people in the accounting practice. And so it makes it really easy. I mean, it's, it's just such a great environment to learn in. There's, there's so many people, I find almost everyone is helpful and, and, and people relate so well. So, you know, the difference between the, the small firm and the big firm you know, there, there was more uh, of those people around and, and you have more um, focused discipline, which is, which is neat, obviously people that are, are focused on, you know, a bit more narrow craft in some cases and, and clients are a little bigger. So you see the, the principles are the same and, and the building blocks that I learned at a small firm. And I think that people learn, you know, when they're starting at a big firm, those, those building blocks are pretty universal, which was really neat to see that. Absolutely. Um, and just how well the both the profession and and the knowledge base travels really well, not just, you know, in Halifax, I, I've done lots of work across the country and, and, and internationally been fortunate to do stuff around the world. You um, have actually, I remember before you came to my class, um, you're like, okay, I just, um, we have to pick a time when I'm back from Australia, yeah. not before I fly out to Vancouver or something like that. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like we'll, we'll figure that out and even um this call got rescheduled a little bit I feel like we had um you were coming back from BC I was yeah. going there so we had some logistics that way I think you were going for work yeah yes I was going yeah. for non-work and so and then um this got rescheduled again because can I say the reason why 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. By all yeah, means. Yeah. Because you are facilitating buildings being purchased. Like what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you're literally yeah. buying buildings and you're like, oh, I'm really sorry. Can we push this? I was like, you're buying like buildings. Like, yeah, we can push this. <laughs> <laughs> like our our cat our students are important and they can wait. Like you're buying a building. Um, so yeah. super, super cool. I love, by the way, linear is overdone. I don't know about you, but anytime I have a catch up with like a friend or anything and you go to like dinner, it's like, and eventually you got to cover like 20% of what you want to cover. And you're like, whatever, like this will be a part two or three or whatever. Um, I recall a story of you sleeping on a friend's floor in Toronto. Was this, mm. where did this fit into the picture? Yeah, that was, so it was, I'm going to say it was a few months before I, I ended up getting the job at Grant Thornton. I was, okay. I was, in, I was in Toronto. It was a, a classmate, a buddy of mine, um, and and uh, you know at the time when I was, I, I I knew I wanted to to go to a bigger firm. I knew I wanted to be focused on deals. Coming from a small firm in Halifax, you know, I thought, geez, you know, maybe I need to go to Toronto. And obviously, a lot going on there, business and and transaction wise for sure. And and so, you know, I'd taken a couple of weeks vacation and and headed up there and and was going through the recruitment process and, and doing a bunch of interviews with banks and, and firms and, and staying uh, at a good friend of mine who was kind enough to lend me his coach. And, and that I'd actually gotten a call from uh, a Grant Thornton recruiter at the time who was based out of Toronto, but, but hiring for the position in Halifax. So I, uh, I was kind of prepared to, to, to pack up my bags and head to Toronto, but you know, it's, it's an interesting thing at that time, got the, got the offer and opportunity in Halifax and, and, um, in hindsight, I, I'm I'm very fortunate and, and glad I got to stay in Halifax. It's um, I'm I'm a very patriotic blue noser and, and love Halifax very much. So, but it, you know, again, it came it was the right opportunity, and and in hindsight, um, it it kind of segued into the the rest of my career and a lot of the stuff that I'm doing now. But uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The reason I bring it up is because Keshav, who's the producer for this for our show uh he will be doing a wonderful intro for you and for this episode no pressure Keshav uh but all his intros are fabulous <laughs> he was uh just entering his second year he was one of my first ever students uh in the first year and I invited him and a few other first years to come to our class when you gave your original presentation and he afterwards said it then and then said it a couple years later when he knew we were doing this and he's like I gained so many things from that talk with uh, Charles. But one of the things I came with is like, have your goals and you can achieve your goals in Halifax. It's a big enough city. It's mm. growing. And I think you said three years ago, like it's growing. There's more and more opportunities. You, as we'll get into, are part of the reason why it's growing. So you're contributing to this growth. And, you know, you said, yeah, like I went because you know, people said, go to Toronto, get jobs, go to Toronto. And when you were in Toronto, you ended up finding a job in Halifax. And so <laughs> he, I think, got from this, I, I might be, you know, putting some words um, in his mouth, but I've also heard from other students that they felt empowered. Like, I don't need, you know, we are always told in our lives, well, you can get good grades or you can have a social life. Screw it, do both. Well, I can um, have the career I want and live in the city I want. Absolutely. Like start making, instead of those either or, start doing these ands and just get creative and be willing to put yourself out there. When you say you interviewed, I doubt you were like applying one, one resume to an Indeed thing and then sitting at home like twiddling your thumbs. <laughs> I bet you were like LinkedIn messaging, you were going yeah, on copies, yeah. you were yeah. like, hello, I am Charles, you're welcome, let's talk. <laughs> yeah, right? totally, totally. No, it, it, and, and that's been a big thing for me always, like I am. Um, I think that the pro what you learn from from reaching out to people when you when you figure and you, you don't have to know exactly what it is you want. I mean, half of the process when you're, you know, directionally trying to figure it out, you know, the people you meet when you're trying to you know, move towards perfection and in some way, shape or form that that starts to form what that is. And, and um I've always, I, I continue to be a, a student, a student of business, and I continue to seek mentorship and, and coaching and teaching. Um, and I, I think learning is, is, a, is a lifetime thing. And it, certainly for me, it's, it's never really been in the context of the classroom. But, but um, no, I, I, you know, Halifax, just to kind of drill down on that. Yeah. And again, my career, I, I've been able to work on a, a lot of projects and work with a lot of people that 
you know, typically you wouldn't necessarily get to in Halifax. And, and I mean, the only reason is, is because I've, I've, I've worked really hard. I've been passionate about working with other passionate people and, and, you know, definitely sometimes you have to work a little harder and, and sometimes you have to work a little later, you know, time zones all over the world. And, and, but in this day and age, and, and, and especially um, in the last couple of years, we've seen, you know, just how connected you can be and, and how virtual of a world it is. I think that um, finding the right people and being passionate about whatever it is you're doing is way more important than, than, than where it is you're, you're doing it. Um, you have to be mindful of it, right? But no, Halifax is, I mean, it's such an exciting time. Like having lived here my entire life, I, I, I've kind of seen it grow and, and grow and accelerate. And what's, what's always been exciting, I think, is, you know, there's such a concentration of universities that inherently have a lot of young, motivated, really smart people. Um, and, it's, and it is nice to see when you graduate from university, you know, you, you, you can definitely, there's a lot of creativity here. Um, and I think things are shifting increasingly where, you know, Halifax is becoming a, a, a bit more of a digital city. And, and so for me, I'm, I'm obviously, uh, although biased, pretty excited about what's ahead and, and what we're seeing, uh, you know, downtown and, and in the surrounding kind of areas. So, yeah. Absolutely. yeah. Hey, um, how old were you when you got your first CFO gig? I was, I was 20, 26. I guess. <laughs> yeah. And I kind of <laughs> fell into it. I mean, it, it, oh it's my, you know, okay. Okay. You're going to say that. I'm like, why do we always do that? Well, I got lucky and it's like, yeah, but like people just don't like random people don't just get lucky. Like you have to have the no, hard work. Sure. You have to have the personality. You have to be putting yourself in there. And then, yeah, sometimes timing has to work out. Like businesses have to have like the need for a CFO. So you, you, you know, I'm just gonna push back on that. Like it, there was some good timing, but <laughs> <laughs> totally. Well, and 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 the biggest actually, the biggest thing I would find is um, someone gave me an opportunity, and and mm. and and I um, <laughs> I took it. I was I was drastically in over my head, and and but but I took the opportunity because I I'm not really sure I knew exactly where it would lead, but but I knew you know the people that I was working with, you know, really great team. Um, they had a lot of confidence in me, which, you know, in turn gave me the confidence to do it. And, and I was probably a little, uh, I probably had a little starry eyed uh, bliss. And, and so, which, which you need that in business. Sometimes it, it, <laughs> ignorance truly is bliss. And, and a lot of entrepreneurs in, in their moments of honesty will tell you that, okay. but um, no, it, it was, I mean, given the opportunity, I, I for sure had aligned myself with people that, you know, I felt were, doing really neat things they were going to be successful I, I was learning a lot from them and then when I when I was given the opportunity I took it and you know that first opportunity um was, was with a small public company and and, hey, and hold on hold on because yeah. there's two things there that I, I'm going to interrupt on you said you were supported by a lot of people um that had your best interest in mind and that were going to kind of support you um do you find you're more motivated by the people that support you or have you ever had any haters or any people who <laughs> wanted you to fail? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure I probably, I probably have. I found sometimes I would find that um, I'm a very competitive person. Um, I would say I'm, as I, as I've gotten older, I, I become more um, introspectively competitive and, and kind of quietly competitive. When I was younger, I was more outwardly <laughs> competitive, which I, I still can be at times, I'm told. But but what I, I've, I've used both uh, motivations. I, I find at this point in my life, um, the people around me much more motivating and, and, and what I want to accomplish with those people. Um, and, and, you know, the, the, the employees that, that I have and the businesses I work with, the, the shareholders, um, the commercial stakeholders and partners, all, all those people, there's a lot of people that you know, I feel a huge sense of responsibility um, and obligation to, but, but also my own drive and, and what I want to accomplish. And I try to never lose sight of that. And, and it's a balance for sure. When you, when you have um, people that you're responsible for, but, you know, I coming through my, my CPA and, and in the earlier days of, of business definitely had a chip on my shoulder and it was more so internally, I would create these things, you know, I want to compete against this person. I want to, you know, best to this person and and I think you know business and, and life in general can can be competitive and 
it's great to utilize that. It's, it's, it's important to not lose sight. And, and I always say, you know, never measure your own life and accomplishments with other people's yardsticks. You know, you, you really have to kind of be careful with that because um, it is so relative. And, and I think as you go further down the road, you have more perspective of that. But for sure, I, I've, the odd time I've, I've had a chip on my shoulder with you know, oh, no, and people it's, don't think I can even, do it. <laughs> yeah, no, and it's not even just like me trying to throw you under the bus or it's just more so, um, you know, I had some prominent roles at a relatively like early age as well. And, you know, sometimes when you're that age or even quitting the firm, I recall some people saying, uh, like, you are effing going to fail. Um, <laughs> you, basically, you're going to go hungry. And then, um, you know, a few months later, when I launched my consulting business and at UP Marks uh, night, the party before the results, um, those same people being inebriated and saying, you're so like lucky or you're mm. so brave or I wish I was you. And I'm like, what is going on? And it was then that I was like, because I was, once you make a decision, you kind of, and you make it for your own reasons, you got to go with it. And learning on how to use that constructive feedback, either like learn insights, oh, like, what am I missing? Like, nope, thought about that. Don't worry. <laughs> like, nope, I'm good. Um, and then using it, I'm like, oh, I'll F and show you, right? Like, tell me I can't, right? There's a guy in high school, uh, number two in math. You know why? Because he was angry. I was number one and kept telling me he was going to beat me. Right. So it's like, <laughs> it's silly. And but, uh, growing up, maturing, getting more responsibilities, getting more perspective and, you know, and learning to, you know, like you said, be more internal. So I was just wondering, I'm like, oh, I wonder how many people, you know, either said to you directly or implied or, you know, people to me were like, oh, you're really lucky to get that role. Or how did you get that? Or who do you know? Or this or that? And I'm like, um, do you want to know like what I do on a daily basis? Do you want to know mm. how my role changed since I went from controller to CFO? Do you want to know, like, do you want to know a bit more about this? And so we can like share and collaborate, or do you really just want to ask these little bit of passive aggressive questions for no other reason and aligning yourself with people that are more supportive, like more people that are like you or who want to, you know, build you up and you in turn build them up and kind of having that shift. So I was just curious. I'm like, cause I'm from out West <laughs> and I just wondered how these, <laughs> people are people are people right and yeah. it's almost Come good on. if nobody was hating on us then um, you almost wonder like what do you stand for if if you can't you know what I mean um attract some of that at least that's how I justify it to myself so how do you go from Grant Thornton and their deals department to being a CFO at 26 <laughs> yeah right yeah. can you draw the map for everybody to follow please <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I guess it, I guess it looks pretty straight in hindsight, but you, you know what? So, so had um, I, I guess it was uh, the summer of 2015. I, I had a good friend of mine that I had known um, for several years, entrepreneurial guy uh, based out in, in Vancouver, and and he had kind of been talking to me about different things. and said, you know, we this great business. I, I love to have you come do some work. And, and, you know, they, they need a CFO. I, I, I think we can take the business public. And, and you know, being a young accountant, I, I, was, uh, I thought that was very interesting and exciting. What could possibly go wrong? And uh, kind of concurrent with that, there was a family office here in Halifax um, who I'd had a relationship with. And, you know, they'd, they'd kind of been mentors to me over the years. And, and you know, great, great Atlantic Canadian family that had done a bunch of awesome things and, and continue to do so. And, and, you know, it's fortunate that I had a, a kind of a standing offer from them if I ever left uh, public practice that uh, I could, could come do some work with them and, and they'd find something for me to do in, in, in the businesses. And so I think, I, you know, I got to the point where I was at the firm and, and, and I guess by, by some standards, you know, the traditional standard, the accounting firm folks leave that at some point in their career, if they don't kind of go down the partnership track. And, and, you know, I left, I left a little earlier on than that, but again, it was, it was, it was opportunity driven. Um, and it was the people that I was going to work with in both of those opportunities and split my time. Um, really great people had a lot of respect for them and, and knew that I would learn a lot there. And, and so kind of felt like it was, it was a good time to try something different and felt like, you know, I, I, I hate to say this because it's kind of cliche, but you can always go back to the firm. And, and I don't say it like that because I think, you know, the firm is, is also a, an awesome career and, and, you know, an awesome place for all those reasons I mentioned. But for me, I had, I had, a, I had a, a, a desire to kind of 
try something and, and mm-hmm. particularly more entrepreneurial. So, so left there and, and, you know, that opportunity is what snowballed in, into the first CFO gig concurrently uh, with the family I was working with, got to, got to work on some transactions and help sell some of the businesses they had and, and look at a myriad of different um, opportunities, businesses to buy and, and investments to make. And, and, you know, over the next kind of couple of years, that, that's really, I got exposure to um, so many more aspects of business beyond accounting and finance, those were my building blocks for sure. And, and that was kind of my, my bread and butter, so to speak, but it really became the spring springboard into working with a lot of really awesome entrepreneurs, getting to see um, all facets of, of business and understanding HR and operations and management and, and why all those things translate into the bottom line and how important they are. And, and you know, I think it was the, the kind of the next couple of years of working, you know, primarily small, medium sized businesses, um, some private, some small public ones that really kind of led into what I've been focused on the last few years, which, you know, taking a, taking a couple companies public and, and oh, wait, 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 wait. I didn't even know so that's, that's part of this. We were doing a little catch up before we started recording and I was like, I don't want to hear about any of this. I want to know. So, okay. So wait a minute. Yeah. Um, when fall of 2018 happened, you yep. were, um, you were definitely still with, uh, the cannabis company yep. and, yep. um, the whole plan was to take them public. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. Okay. So, and it was yep. just amazing because when you gave your talk, you, and this is like, this is three years ago. So cannabis was legalized, I think two months later or else. Yeah. Two months later. Yeah. It was fabulous. Um, so that we kind of knew that it was coming. And when you would give your entire talk at the end, you said what company you were in and holy shit, the students were like, she brought a, like, <laughs> she brought a young cannabis officer to like our, our classroom. Yeah. Holy crap. So I just want to say thank you because yeah. I am not cool by nature. Um, but <laughs> there's definitely some, some good vibes. Uh, so thank you. Uh, so the whole, uh, if I recall correctly with that cannabis company, uh, the ticker symbol was going to our husband. We'll hear about this. It was going to be oils because there was proprietary knowledge on how to extract um, the cannabis like oil and, and get it out into a place that you can either use it either for like food or drinks or I don't know, uh, whatever oh, else they do with cannabis. Is this all like what happened to that company? Like where, where did yeah, it go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, yeah, so, so 2018 to fast forward, we were, and I, I was in Australia, I guess that fall, we were, we were raising capital ahead of ahead of our plan to go public. And, and we ended up taking the company public successfully in, uh, in March of 2019. Yep. We, we so that was just a that. little bit of work, right? Yeah, just, just a little bit. Yeah. And, 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 a, and a lot of learning uh, throughout, but, you know, again, a great, great, a fun process. Um, it's something, something that, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to, I guess, uh, you don't learn that in school, so to speak. And, and got to work with a lot of great lawyers and accountants and, and business folks on that and, and had a lot of fun. And, and since then, I'm still involved with that business as the CFO public company. And, and we've gone on to, to raise a bunch more capital and, and to, to file a number of patents. We've got, uh, I guess there's over 80 issued patents. So one of the biggest cannabis patent portfolios in the world and, and now launching our own products. Uh, and and so it's it's been really neat to see. I mean, that's a business that that I've been involved with for for four years now, over four years, and and to see it go from truly idea stage all the way through to maturity, where you know we're 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 an operating company, is, has been exciting and, and a really cool journey. And and you know, being public is just part of that. I think what I found interesting in my career is is. And, and people have asked me this, do you, do you prefer public or private companies? Yeah. I, I, I'm totally agnostic to it. I've never been able to figure it out because to me, it's more about like businesses are just collections of, of people uh, doing something. And, and, you know, whether you're public, public or private, it doesn't really matter in the sense that completely the yeah, best, bi- like, the best like businesses Amazon have the public. <laughs> like, huh? like oh, have another yeah, reason. It's <laughs> like, a means to an end with a capital structure. And, and yeah. so, but it's, but, you know, and, and, and so I've been fortunate to kind of get to, to work on both and, and I enjoy that. And, and I think the, the principles kind of cross one another for sure. 
Um, and, and, and the cannabis industry, I mean, to, to touch on that for a second has been really cool as well in the sense mm. that, you know, it's, it's, it's not very often in, in, in our lifetime where a new industry is born, so to speak, and, and you get to see kind of the, uh, um, the onset of, of a business that's gone through really fast cycles, you know, tons of capital flowed in the business grew and contracted and, and it grew and contracted. And it's kind of like uh, dog years, so to speak. So from a, from a business standpoint, really need to get into growing industries and new industries and changing ones. And I think, especially in, in this day and age, as students come out of university and, and programs and stuff, like the different opportunities are, are, kind of endless with with the businesses that you can work with so I think that's something that if I was coming at a university again I'd, I'd probably be more mindful of that I, I trying to understand and align yourself with an industry that you think is exciting and growing is, is a is a neat way to get exposed to things at an earlier stage for sure absolutely and it's really cool to just emphasize that there was no such thing as uh, cannabis accounting when you went to school, right? <laughs> <laughs> when I did my CA or my C my UP or CP equivalent, uh, we were always like, we were so frustrated at the beginning, like, why, why do we know the answer? How do you find the answer? Why do I need to? And essentially you, you slowly or quickly, if you're brighter than I was, find out that you're being trained to think critically, um, through frustration and that you are figuring out how to do accounting for things that don't yet exist because um, being leaders of a profession, that's what you need to do. So the fact that you didn't do a cannabis accounting quote in your <laughs> undergrad or in your CA, yeah. like that's, that's by design and that's okay. So it's cool if you can get aligned operationally or you can kind of get in and see more opportunities because they likely just won't have as much money to hire established you know, people. So you get to come in and you know, wear a couple different hats and get a seat on the rocket ship. Um, but don't feel like you need to know things before you go there. Like throughout all of your story, what I hear and what I've heard with previous guests is like, you don't have the perfect resume um, with all the boxes ticked. You may have one or two things. You might have just a lot of interest and a lot of excitement to go out and figure shit out as you get in. And like, I, you know, you've hired people, I've hired a few people and I will hire all day, every day for attitude and for like figure shit out ability versus, yes. oh, I know how to do that. I'm like, do you like <laughs> show me, don't tell me. Right. Yeah, totally. Totally. No, it's, it's really true. I mean, and <clears throat> the, the smaller business or, or the more entrepreneurial a business is, um, the, the there's pros and cons you, you, you have less guardrails where you have no guardrails <laughs> no <is> good <laughs> because you, you 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 learn at your own pace and and it's it's really self-driven um and and i think it's good to uh, i've always I, uh, smaller teams and smaller businesses or early stage businesses i i always key off the people right and and i typically everything i'm involved with now um is because of one or or a handful of people that are involved with that business. Um, and, and so when I look at a company, I, I don't, I don't necessarily look at the size of the stage as much as I say, you know, do I believe in these people and what they're mm -hmm. trying to do? And do I, do we have mutually kind of aligning values? Um, I'd be mindful of, you know, I'm always mindful of, of from a learning standpoint and, and from a work standpoint, but you can, to your point, you can, you can, figure things out if you're motivated and if you're mindful and, and have good self-awareness don't don't jump in too deep of a pool but but definitely like i i've i've always uh, you know jumped or been thrown into the deep end of the pool so to speak and, and i've learned a, a lot um sometimes a little more painfully but uh you know so far so good um it's just about being mindful and aware of it and and i think that it is definitely not something to shy away from um yeah. I think, totally. yeah, being, what did you say, socially aware, being just like aware, situationally aware of, yeah. okay, maybe I don't tick all the boxes, but I tick enough or I tick some or, you know, not overselling, right? Because nobody wants to be oversold and then have being under delivered. But you almost, it sounds like, have created a reputation for yourself where you have become known as somebody who can take companies public. And I say this because in the last three years, we went from or last two and a half years now, um, to having just taken one to you mentioning that you've taken, I think, do you say a few or four, like you've taken several <laughs> public, I'm just going to say yeah. several, cause it's, that, that's yeah, a lot that's to me. Accurate. Um, how did, how did those opportunities come or was you said yeah. that, yeah, like, how did we go from that to this? I'm just. 
Yeah, it, it's I I, yeah, I want to say it's probably four four maybe now, but again, it's it's more than we can count, and we're more accountants. Than, <laughs> <laughs> sounds more impressive than it is. I swear. No, it's it's the, the commonality though, like with all those um, businesses, um, great group of people involved, and, and folks that have been mentors of mine and and have been become. Um, business partners and, and, and colleagues. Um, and yeah, I mean, it all stemmed back to that kind of first opportunity I had and, and uh, went well, did a good job, worked really hard and, and, and that begot another opportunity. And I think that's a theme, um, certainly in my career, is doing a really good job in whatever it was when I was at the firm. You know, I worked hard. I was, I was passionate. I I didn't think it was a forever job, but it didn't matter. I, mm. I, I, I felt like, and, and and this has come true. I felt like the people that I was working with, I, I would always have a relationship with in some way, shape or form. And, and you know, to this day, I, I, I still work with uh, that firm. They're, they're, they, they now help me with my taxes because it's more complicated oh, I than I can it. handle. So, <laughs> I'm, That's fabulous. Uh, so it's, it's come full circle. And, and you know, I've, I'm fortunate I've got great relationships with the partners there still who are who are now uh, retiring. Actually, it's kind of neat to see that come full circle. And so, you know, with everything in, in business, um, it, it seems to always present a, another opportunity. And, and uh, you know, that's, there's no shortage of things to do, certainly in my no. life. <laughs> um. Okay, so you mentioned being motivated by your team. And it sounds like you have you have quite the number of responsibilities uh, from a human capital perspective. Uh, so given the, your career trajectory and given like what you've all done, how do you, do you, do you even use accounting now? Like, how do you, how do you use it? Like you're an accountant. <laughs> like, do you even account? Like, what does that look like on a day-to-day -day basis? Or is it just, you know, maybe something that's not overtly in the toolkit, but just in there? Yeah, it's it's a good question. I I actually still find I I because of the different uh, businesses I'm involved with, I I get a very good breadth of accounting. Um, in, increasingly, I find myself working with really great accounts and advisors, and and really relying on on those experts. Um, but I'm fortunate every everything from the public company work through to the the private company work and operational work. Um, I do get exposed to to a fair bit of the full gamut, I would say, of of my CPA toolbox from IFRSs all the way through to uh, to managerial accounting and and net present values and all that jazz. And 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 it's neat. I mean, I I I, I use a lot of it in the day to day. I I think I probably underestimate how much I use um, because, to your point. It, a lot of it just is, is kind of natural. I, the way I look at business cases and, and analyze different decisions to make and, and really tie that back to the numbers. Um, it's, it's, I, I use it all every day uh, <laughs> and it really, it's, it's probably impossible to segregate it, but, but I think therein lies the, the, um, the benefit of the program. And, and you kind of start to realize when you get into different aspects of business and, and, you know, your career goes on, just how, how valuable it is, and particularly on like business decision making and stuff like that. A, lo a lot of what I do nowadays, obviously, is, is more strategy oriented with, with the companies and, and figuring out which way we're going and, and, and mm -hmm. how do we get there. And then, you know, helping put the right team together and, and, and motivate that team and work with that team. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to kind of, uh, get to use the full toolbox and and certainly uh i i have an appreciation for everything i've learned uh, to date and continue to learn i mean that's the thing about accounting is it's always evolving accounting and finance constantly changing so you're always uh, always learning perfect i want to be super mindful of time are you do we have a clock on this i i don't i'm i'm, I'm probably good for another uh 10 ish minutes. Okay. Okay. I was going to say 13, so I can do 10. Um, cool. cool. So you're really busy. I know that you have a lot of things on the go right now, including the summer. And is there any time for fun? Have you, has it been <laughs> like, yeah, the last time you had fun was when you were 17, or have there yeah. been opportunities for fun along the way? And do you still incorporate fun in your life? <laughs> yeah. Well, fortunately, I have fun doing deals and business, but no, I, <laughs> I, I, um, 
Well, you know, it's, it's been interesting. I, I, I'm fortunate in the sense that um, now, and, and now especially, I, I'm increasingly doing more and more work in, in business with, with friends of mine that I went to mm-hmm. university with who have gone on to have really cool careers. And, and so um, I, I, I can honestly say that I, that I work with a lot of my friends and, and that's something I'm, I'm, I'm proud of and, and really uh, appreciative of. So I have a lot of fun. As, as people that know me would say uh, in, in the day-to-day, but for sure, I mean, you know, I, family is very important to me. And I think, you know, the harder you work and the, and the more you work, you know, you have to have time to play as well. So work hard, play hard. Definitely. I, I subscribe to that. And, and, you know, in normal times, I, I, I would be traveling more for me. That's, you know, that's a bit of the, that's a bit of the, uh, I don't unplug. I won't say that, but I, I like to get away a little bit uh, and, and, <laughs> You know, unfortunately, it's, I haven't done a lot of that lately, but, yeah. but it's, I think on the flip side for me in the last couple of years, uh, in the last year and a half, it's actually been nice to kind of be in one place for a while. I, I would typically be traveling a, a ton on a regular basis. Um, so it's been nice to hang out and, and get to be a little more stationary and, and enjoy Halifax. And um, we've obviously been in, in a great part of the world the last little bit, but yes. I will, I will, uh, you know, for, for me, fun is, is definitely, it's, it's integrating work and life and, and getting to, Oh, you uh, use my favorite word. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. Like when totally. people are like work-life balance, I was like, I mean, it's like work and life. If you can create yeah. a work that you love with people that you love and a life that, you know, and they both support each other. Like, why do we need to bring in this word named balance? Unless you feel like that's important to you or, you know, unless you want it to be completely separate but I got accused of um, having work as one of my hobbies previously (laughs) by a friend. She's like, I feel like you don't have a lot of hobbies. I feel like you have work that are hobbies. And I was like, I don't know. I um, like previous to education, I'm like, I consulted a bunch and I was fortunate to, you know, you grow your, your practice and you grow your book. And I was like, I only worked with people I really liked. And that wasn't really an accident so I don't, I don't really know so I can relate a lot to that um when you traveled for work would you tack on a couple of days before or after in the location that you were at to kind of get to know the place a little bit and I I try to yeah because yeah. travel travel for work is really different like I, I've gotten to go to really cool places around the world very different than traveling for 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 fun and and pleasure um but yeah no I I, I definitely do try to do that and 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 it's neat to be in a place where, you know, you get to meet people through business and, and you make friends in those places and definitely try to, uh, to spend a couple of days in, in different parts of the world. And for me, that's, a, I mean, traveling is such a luxury and it's so, it's so nice because you get to see how things culturally are different in other places. It makes you appreciate where you're from sometimes even more and, and gives you a kind of just different perspective. So yeah, no, totally. I, I, I do try to do that whenever possible. Cool. I'm just giving like little, little glimpses just to case students um, because I've heard like, oh, you know, when I retire, I will travel or I've heard, oh, I need to travel before, uh, before I start work because I'll never get to travel again. And I'm like, why would you do that to yourself? And just different items like that. I'm like, what? Like, no, you, if it's important to you, you can make it work. Okay. Um, A question that came up from our students, they want me to ask um, CPAs and I love this. Uh, It will just real short, maybe unless it turns longer. Um, Do you regret... completing your CPA? I've no regrets. No. <laughs> In <laughs> I fact, like, I, 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 I actually was talking to a CPA the other day and, and he's just like, yeah, you know, I, I, he's gone on to a very entrepreneurial career and he, he let his CPA lapse and, and didn't, didn't keep up with his uh, PD thing. And, and, and I, and I chastised him because, <laughs> you know, and that, and that was just me. I, I was yeah. giving him a hard time, but no, I, for me, I, it's interesting because, you know, I, I've often thought, where would my career have been had I not done my CPA? And hard, hard to imagine it, but I think it would have been a lot harder and a lot more work and would have taken a lot of, of, of it would have taken a different path for sure um, in the time frame that I've, that I've gone through in. So I, um, I, I'd be hard pressed to say I'd want to go back and do it again once is enough. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm, you know, I'm glad I got it done on that first, uh, you know, stint, but, but it's, um, no, I, 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 it's, it's the best decision I've made kind of career wise because, you know, it's still kind of presenting a lot of opportunities to me and, and, and repaying me 10 times over. And, and so I would definitely, um, 
No, I have no regrets about <laughs> it and uh, very glad I did it. <laughs> uh, maybe this will lead in, maybe it won't, um, to any advice you'd have for current Dow majors, perhaps third years, fourth years, people just going to their fourth year, um, piece of advice that you might have. Yeah, I, I think it's important to, for me, uh, like everything I've done, academic work-wise is I've always tried to figure out why am I doing this mm. and, and not just the superficial why because you want to raise or because you, know, <laughs> you want to make a lot of money or you want to this that's good too and, and that's a, it's a great facet of life when you when you execute you can generally do well but it, I think it's it's you know there's got to be more motivation than that and and um, motivation will change as you have more responsibility and, and as you get deeper in an industry or or whatever it is I, but I think at the onset trying to figure out why like when I decided to do my CPA, I, I wanted to understand more about business. And, and I felt like accounting was a really important part of that business. And, and, and every business had it, whether they liked it or not. And so that was my why. And when I was going through, I said, well, geez, I might as well learn as much as I can since I'm, I got to do this. So I'm going through it. Um, and, you know, it, my why has changed over, over the years and, and, and months. And, and so but thinking about that, and, and, and a lot of it, that's hard to define that because you don't necessarily know why. And, and I found the more people I met, the more people I talked to, the, the, the more I educated myself um, in general on something, whether it's an industry or, or a specific business, it started to define that why. And, and, that, and that's really motivating. That's what, you know, you're studying late or you're saying, I, I don't want to study at all on this Sunday, or I don't yeah. want to do this or that you know, it's those little things that kind of say, okay, I know why I'm doing it. I have a sense of purpose. Um, and it's not a static thing. It'll change. It doesn't have to be perfect, but giving some thought to that. And, and I think we spend so much time working so much time studying so much, all that. So we spend so little time saying, well, why am I doing this? It's, it's just that next kind of increment. So trying to take a step back every so often and look at the big picture and, and say, where am I heading? Like, just directionally where am I heading and why am I going that way and, and making sure that you know you do that every so often so I, I think that would be the advice and I think that's just kind of universal that I, I try to do that in, in in all facets of life I think it's important no, that's great and um, it's also like it's really not a race so I know you've accomplished a lot in a relatively short amount of time and, but it's, it's your, it's your goals. It's your, your why. And asking yourself that I've had a student and she didn't have any practical experience when she graduated from Dow that could apply to accounting. So she had the 30 months uh, that she needed to accomplish. So at first she was going to fast track CPA and she's going to take two modules um, back to back and two modules back to back and just get it done in uh, just under a year, like 16 months. And then she took a step back. And this was pre-COVID, so she had an opportunity to travel. And mm. she had some funds, I believe, from a parent or, you know, she had some resources. Yep. And she was like, you know, I'm not going to become a CPA any quicker. I, yeah, it would be nice to not work and study, but I worked really hard and I want to, you know, enjoy the summer, see some sites, spend some time with my boyfriend, her dog, you know, her family. Yep. And that was her why. And I was so so proud of her for making that decision, not because of what it was, but how she came to it and that thoughtfulness because, and that's one of the reasons why I like to have a number of varied guests on here is because, you know, we're sharing our whys, we're sharing our thought processes, we're sharing this and, you know, bits of what you've said will resonate to people. And um, I know, I have no doubt about that and really help them discover what their why is, and which will help fuel their decision making and also give them permission to do that mm. and say okay yeah. maybe I don't have a plan that looks like everybody else's but I have similar thought logic and and really just guide with that because you know when I was young I looked at adults I'm like man they got stuff like figured out and then now I'm an adult <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like oh we're making this up as we go <laughs> That's Definitely. what's happening, but we're putting more tools in our toolboxes. Um, we're hashtag lifelong learners, and we're at the part of our careers where we're able to reach out to other people, um, just and continue to reach out to others. So reach up, reach out, reach over, um, and just help us all figure this stuff up. So my last question to you, Charles, is one that I like to ask all my guests. A number of them 
hate this question. And some of them, <laughs> um, a few have said they liked it afterwards. I did warn you. So hopefully this doesn't come as a super big surprise, but I would love to know what is your definition of success? That's good. That's good. Yeah. It's a good question. I actually, I, I've never met a question that I don't like and, and I like hard ones. Um, so I think actually that, that's a good segue from my last point about kind of purpose and why. And, and I think success is, is relative. Um, and I think it's changing. I, I know success for me has, has, uh, evolved over the last 10 years for sure and and will continue to um i think for su success for me is is uh kind of bouncing out of bed as cliche as that is and 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 being very motivated uh working with great people and and at the end of the day feeling good about what you've done and and, and i think if i really distilled down what success is and this is more business focused because I think more important than that is life. And, and, you know, for me, that's family is very, very important um, and, and will become increasingly important. Uh, no kids yet or any of that, but, you know, that's something that for me, I'd, I'd like to have, have kids someday. And, and that also that'll be another uh, kettle of fish, but, but in the, um, you know, it's growing something, being part of something that's growing. And, and I think that goes for, for business and, and all facets of my life. I, I like to be part of that. And, and, you know, again, it's not a static thing for me. Success isn't I've, I've achieved this goal. I've, you know, done this deal or I've, or I've bought this or I've made that. It, 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 that has become less and less relevant to me um, over the years. And it's more about growing things and, and, and seeing change, seeing the result of change. That's really important to me. So, you know, that's a, uh, 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 I think that's a, that's a, that's a, a partial answer to it, but uh, yeah, I, I, it's something I do think about um, on a, on a regular basis. And I think again, coming back to the purpose, you know, that idea of w what is what is success, what what is the accomplishment that you're working towards, you, you have to be really mindful of that. Completely. Thank you. And thank you for being so generous with your time, with your attention, with your thoughtful. Um, answers. Uh, for everybody here, this isn't the first time. Uh, this isn't actually the second time we've done this. This is the third. Uh, so <laughs> one was in class and one was um, before this podcast even started. Uh, Charles is such a great guest and interacted with our students so well uh, that I was like, oh, we should record this over Skype. So we did. And then my computer <laughs> crashed right at the end. And you were beyond generous with your kindness and understanding. And I just want to say it's been always, always a pleasure. Um, so like, thank you. If students have a question for you, if they want to reach out, is it okay? Yeah, yeah, no, but by all means, I always, uh, I was once there myself, and, and I had some great, uh, great people that that, that listened to my questions and gave me great answers. So no, I, I'm always happy to, uh, always happy to have a coffee or, or, or have a chat with, uh, with students aspiring or otherwise would be accountants or, or doesn't matter. Always happy to chat with folks. Thank you. I will be posting your LinkedIn um, info in the, uh, in the comment section uh, or underneath the info section and they can reach out. Um, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, do you have any comments or final items to add before we wrap this up? No, I, I think it's serendipitous. <laughs> uh, serendipitous connecting with you, you know, way back when, and, and it's been a ton of fun, and I've appreciated the opportunity um, to to chat with and kind of share my story with your students, both in person and and, and virtually. So, no, it's always fun uh, and 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 a real privilege for me. I've appreciated it. Always good to chat with you. Thank you, Charles. Thanks. Take care, everyone.